All right, well, welcome everyone. This is the third time I'm hosting uh, a special interest night session on, I just call it rethinking demonstrations. And it's not necessarily about remote videos, but remote videos is a, is a big part of it. And the whole idea about rethinking demonstrations is what can we do to either do better demonstrations or to reach people that are not currently being well served. Uh, I've gotten to speak to people where they said, uh, I belong to a club and I can't go to meetings. And why not? Well, the club meets at night, I can't drive at night. You've got people that simply will never get to the meetings. Even with something like this symposium, the overwhelming majority of people that are attending, the, uh, that, that are members are simply not here. They can't be here, a whole host of reasons. It's expensive, they got real jobs, they can't afford the time. So the question is, what can you do for them? What can you do to, to expand your audience? And the uh, remote demonstrations is an interesting way of doing it. So uh, two years ago, I did a presentation where I explained what remote demonstrations are and why people should consider doing them, both from the demonstrator standpoint and from the club standpoint. What's in it for, for each of you? And from a, a club standpoint, if you're a program chairman, all of a sudden you've got this possibility of, of uh, a worldwide pool of talent. You don't have to have, have the people that live near you. When I was hired for my last uh, position, I, you know, it was interesting because I work from home and the, uh, the fellow who hired me, it was not, at the time, it was not popular to have anybody working from home. So the question is when you're trying to hire somebody, are you trying to hire the best person for the job or are you trying to hire the best person for the job that happens to be within driving distance of your office? And so I, I worked for, for EMC, a very large hardware, uh, computer hardware and software company got bought by Dell about a year and a half ago. And uh, so I'm used to working with diverse teams all over the world. And you just get used to it. Your best programmers may be in another continent and your, your the person you report to may be in Europe or whatever. So I'm, I'm used to working with video to begin with. Um, and part of my job there and now in the organization I'm with now is doing training videos, teaching people how to do stuff. So at heart, I'm sort of a, a teacher. And- uh, Yes, Rabbi. <laughs> well, uh, the wizard sometimes works out. But what happens is uh, Lauren and I are hobbyist woodturners. I tell people that if I was a professional woodturner, I probably wouldn't be able to afford to have woodturning as a hobby. Um, and the people that are actually earning their living as woodturners, uh, you can count them on your fingers and actually probably two of them are on this panel. Um, and so I got a call a couple of years ago from Mike Hunter from Hunter Tools and he said, we had uh, a demo that worked out really well, a remote demo that worked out very, very well. And then we had a remote demo that was a disaster. <coughs> and we really need to come up with a set of guidelines. We need someone to, to figure out how to do this in a way that the clubs can, can receive the demos and the demonstrators can do the demonstrations. And so I spent some time trying to figure out how to do this without saying that a demonstrator needs to go out and buy a TriCaster for $30,000 and then another you know, $20,000, $30,000 worth of cameras. And I came up with a solution that uses uh, computers, most notably a notebook computer, and usually webcams. And because very often people have already had computer and webcams are very inexpensive and they're high definition and they focus to a couple of inches and they do well in low light. There's everything good about them. And I tried to explain to people and everything that I say is subject to change. So I said to them, well, you know, you probably don't want to use your camcorders because in order to ingest the camcorder connected to the computer, you probably need a, a $400 adapter to to connect your, your computer. Well, now Camlink came out with one like this for $129. So all of a sudden, 
if you have a couple of camcorders, you can get a couple of these and attach your camcorders. So even the, the, the recommendations for hardware have changed over the years. Um, and, and I adapt as, as necessary. And so uh, I think the first remote demo we did was to Tom's group was the first state group. And then we did one shortly after that to Emiliano's group in Maui. Um, and, but before we did the, the one in Maui two years ago, we, I did this first session on, on uh, how to do it. And I brought like 300 pounds worth of equipment with me to show people that you don't have to go any place with 300 pounds worth of equipment. And, and Lyle was there and he was gonna do his first demonstration, strangely enough, to the Maui group. And I kid with Lyle, and he's heard me say this over and over again, from Lyle, when you think about his technical computer abilities, I say he doesn't know which end of the computer to blow into to get it to play music, right? So that's, that's and, and so I mentored Lyle with the idea, and we went into this together and say, if we can teach Lyle how to do this, anybody could do this. It's not, it's not horrible. But it, it's, and it's not terribly complicated, but it is unfamiliar. You didn't grow up with this stuff. And the analogy I make, and I am full of analogies, is if you grew up on a desert island and you'd never seen an automobile before, and you get brought to Portland, and someone hands you a set of keys and said, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you how to pull the car out of the driveway. What's a key? What's this, what's this idea of locking things up? Uh, the, the concept is alien to you. And then, okay, so which one of these pieces of metal do I use? And which hole in the car do I put it in? And how far do I put it in which direction? And how far do I turn it? If you had to write down the instructions, including the things that they had no concept of, you say, this is entirely too difficult. There's no way anybody could do this. But we grew up watching our parents get into cars and pull them out of the driveway, so it's familiar to us. The old line about you know, how difficult can Chinese as a language be? Little Chinese babies speak it, right? So, so it's that same thing. Once you're familiar with it, once you've done it a couple of times or a couple of dozen or hundreds or thousands of times, it becomes routine. And I mean, I've, I've had uh, problems here. In fact, let me, uh, let me just switch to camera two for a change. Um, uh, I've had problems where, you know, the computer freezes up just before we start. And Emiliano seems to be surprised how, when something's not working, I'm not getting upset. I'm saying, okay, we'll figure it out, you know. And, and we just fuss with it enough and, and, and we figure it out. And, but it is clearly not about me and what I do. It is about us and what we do. Uh, Emiliano uh, <clears throat> not only received our, my first, one of our first demonstrations, but he started demonstrating. And well, I want to use this as a panel to talk about the experiences of people that are either doing demonstrations or learning how to do demonstrations, uh, what this process has been like, what people have found very easy to grasp, what they found challenging to grasp. Uh, uh, we've got uh, some pictures from, uh, from some demonstrations. The way I do demonstrations is quite different than say the way Mike does demonstrations. And so this is really about sharing what we know and trying to figure out what works for a particular situation. Now we have certain, certain uh, uh, whoops, hello, uh, certain benefits here. Um, like we had a, a club that meets in a, uh, a Knights of Columbus hall. And they said, we don't have an internet connection there. Just froze. Alan, your screen uh, Hello, froze. did I? Okay, so let's try, let's try that one there. One second. Give me a second here. All right, that's back. Okay, back. you're back. All right. Um, uh, I may wind up sweating for, you know, with this stuff. Um, and and they, they don't have an internet connection there. And I say, well, you realize that you don't have to meet where you've been meeting. You could rent out the local library. You could go to the church that has a good internet connection or, your, or a college. You just, you don't need a lathe. Somebody's living room. Somebody's living room. Yeah, the, 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 uh, the, the uh, Lone Star group. Uh, 
uh, was in, in this guy's enormous house. And, and so you have a lot of flexibility that you might not have had if you're saying we have to do it the way we've been doing it. So that's really what this thing is about, is rethinking demonstrations. How do you demonstrate uh, to broaden your audience? Now, I, I did speak to um, uh, one Turner, a very well-known Turner, and, and I like him a lot. And he says, no, I can do a better demonstration at your club than I can doing it remotely. And that may very well be the case. Lyle will probably differ with that as far as where, where you can do a better demonstration. But the point is that uh, there's a, an old joke about a woman goes to a butcher and he says, how much are your chickens? And he says they're 39 cents a pound. The woman says to the butcher, but the, the butcher across the street's got a sign for 29 cents a pound. The butcher said, well, go there. He said, well, he doesn't have any. <laughs> well, he said, I can sell you all the ones I don't have for 19 cents a pound. The point is it doesn't matter how good a demonstration you could do in person if you're never going to go there and do it in person. If the club can't afford to bring you there or you can't afford the time to go across country. I can't afford to go from New Jersey to California for a two hour evening demo. It's, it's impractical. But when you have remote demonstrations, you can, you can, uh, you can be anywhere. You could demonstrate anywhere. So Lyle, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have you talk about, say, you did one to uh, England and you did two in one evening, if I recall correctly. Right. So, so that's the kind of stuff that you can't do uh, uh, generally. So, um, so what I'd like to do is, uh, I want to start out with, with Dick. So we brought, we brought Dick in um, and Dick is, where, where, where do you live, Dick? Indianapolis, Indiana. All right, and and Dick is uh, uh, just slightly my side of Lyle when it comes to computer savvy. Does that sound about right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and and most of you, uh, anybody here, know Dick? I mean, Dick's only been around for like a hundred years, right? <laughs> And, and so, uh, uh, Dick, why don't you introduce yourself and explain sort of where you are in the process, because he hasn't done his first remote demo yet, but where you are in the process and how, how this has been for you. Well, with Alan's help, it's been pretty easy. Uh, the big thing was, for me was overcoming the finances. I, Alan and I had several practice sessions, teaching sessions together, and it became abundantly clear real early on that the old computer I had just didn't have the power. Um, there were too many drains on resources and the quality on his end of uh, my transmission was not good to say the least. So I recently upgraded to a state-of-the-art laptop, just like I think Lyle has the same one. and. Uh, I've got the ethernet cable, I've got the webcams, the microphone stands to hold the cameras. I've got a seamless backdrop to make a nice uh, yeah, clutter-free background. Let me see if I can uh, find the, the picture. Oh, here it is. Okay. Uh, let's play, play this. Okay. Oh, actually, I don't want to play. I want to go back to restart and I'll just zoom in on it. Uh, All right. Back. Stop that. <laughs> Let's go restart this. All right, so this is his, his lathe, and I've got some nice little keys set up here so that I can just move stuff around. And so this is a, this is a basic three-camera setup. Um, right. Uh, and why don't you explain what, what the cameras are for, and we'll go from there. The camera labeled overhead camera, that's what is going to look down on the piece. Uh, you'll be able to see the piece rotating, the tool and my hand position. Tailstock camera is just like what it sounds like. It shoots from the tailstock along the bed of the lathe uh, over the piece. Um, the mic stand, I bought two of those, one for each camera. Uh, they have a nice gooselet, yeah, that, that flexible gooseneck gizmo 
so that you can reposition the camera at will. Um, they're adjustable in height. One thing I have done is added an extra 10 pounds of weight to the base just to make them super sturdy and, and stable. Uh, I tend to bump into things and I can knock them over pretty easy, but with that added weight, that's no longer a problem. The, um, that's really about it. I, I, as you can see from the picture that I sent, I keep my face shield handy at all times. That's a, just a matter of habit. You can see the seamless background paper that I have suspended from the ceiling on a roll. Uh, I got that from some camera store years ago. So I'm using an old General 260, circa 1985. As you can see, it's got the riser kit so I can actually swing 19 and 7 eighths inches. Although uh, haven't done that in quite a while because nobody has the money to buy a piece that big. And that's about it. I, I think I am uh, one step away from starting my first demo and that is getting the headset issue worked out. Um, as Alan can tell you, the Plantronics wireless mic does not play well with the mix. Yeah. So what, what that's about is um, uh, Dick is, is using, let me uh, switch over this. Uh, Dick is using a, a, a headset microphone that uh, is noise canceling, which is very good if you're working under a face shield, particularly with a respirator and your dust collector running. Um, and it, the microphone is working properly, but for some reason or another, we're not hearing the sound in the, in the speaker. Alan, you had a question. Okay, so the, the, the question is, and normally we have a microphone to pass out to the audience, but I'm kind of working with what I got here. Um, the thing is, it, it, I mentioned the three camera setup and Dick described two cameras. In a typical live or in situ, in, in place, on location demonstration, minimally I think you need two cameras. One above the lathe, pointing down, preferably fixed focus, so every time you move your hands in and out, the thing's not trying to hunt and then another easily movable camera. As Dick mentioned, we like putting these things on microphone stands because we can keep them very close to us. We don't trip over tripod legs because mo most microphone stands have weighted uh, uh, cast iron bases. But one of the things is when, when you're not looking at those two cameras and you're in a, a symposium room and the demonstrator is talking, well, you look at the demonstrator. So the third camera needs to be on the demonstrator. Right. So at any point, you can, uh, you can look your audience in the eye and talk to them. Now, Lauren and I go a little further. We use a green screen behind us. So we can superimpose ourselves onto anything. So if we're showing a picture, we can just go into the lower corner of the picture, or we can put ourselves uh, in, in, uh, uh, over, the, over the picture. And so that's what the minimal third camera is. When and Lauren I do and have I, the third camera. Go ahead. What was that? I'm saying I do. He, he does have a... Oh, he does have it. He just doesn't show it in that, in that setup. And very often right. that third camera is the, is the webcam in the lid of the notebook computer. So the notebook computer is, is mounted above and behind the headstock of the lathe so that you can just very easily, you know, uh, uh, do, the, do the manipulation. And, and a lot of us will use little wireless keyboards so that we don't even need to touch the computer. We can, I can simply switch cameras by pressing buttons on the keyboard. Question in the audience. So when Dick was talking and we were looking at a picture of his shop, we could see the picture of the shop and we could see you. What did Dick see? Well, right now, Dick is seeing what whatever we're seeing on the monitor. So he couldn't see, he would just, he would not, when the picture's up, he would not see us, he'd just see the picture. He, the way I've got it set up with Dick right now, he is seeing whatever is on this monitor. And if he's on the monitor, he's seeing himself. But the important part is, in my particular case, he is not hearing himself. 
because you don't want that 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 delay. If you've ever heard, ever talk to somebody on a cell phone, everything sounds fine. Ever talk to somebody on the cell phone when you're standing next to them? It's very disconcerting because you 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 you, you the delay is is always present. Um, I've got right now a, a seven millisecond uh, uh, lag time, which is almost nothing. Maybe to answer your question as a demonstrator, what I'm seeing on my computer is you, the audience, and what I'm projecting out to you. I see both at the same time. Yep. Yep. We have. Yep. Yeah. Well, that that see, there, there's a couple of things that that you consider. There are, and this this is uh, something that. It took me a little while to figure out how to explain to people. There are two components to doing a remote demo from a demonstrator standpoint. One is the communication software, the thing that's making the video phone call in effect. And that could be something like Skype or Zoom or WebEx or what, whatever it is to, to have this or FaceTime, whatever it is that's going to connect two camera systems together. And then what we've got is video mixing programs. And the video mixing program is where you can have multiple cameras and you're going to mix and match them, much like you have multiple microphones, mix and match them and send a composite image to that program as if it is a camera, as if it's a single camera. So if I decided that I wanted to put that, that lower third up, that is just something that I'm putting in my mixing program here and then I tell the, 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 communications program, use the output from my mixing program as your video source. Now, what I'm doing here is a little bit different. I'm using a, a, a program called vMix Call, which is part of this a video mixer that I use, this software that I use. And I'm actually, uh, uh, Dick is actually, uh, he logged onto a website and the, the website, uh, the, the browser is asking him what camera and what microphone to use. So it's a very sophisticated system. Question in the front here. So I think, I mean, I suspect all of us would really be interested in some details in terms of what hardware, what software. Uh, you know, it's a lot of great concepts, and, and I appreciate the concepts. But uh, to be honest, what will be successful for me is walking away is, you know, buy these cameras. Right. This is the way you connect it. So I don't know if you have some follow-on reading well, or reference material. It's, it's not follow-on. It's, it's two years ago. So it's been out there for two years. So, so, so that, that no, no, that, but it's a very important point. And that is that <clears throat> I can only show you sort of the way I do things, but that doesn't mean that's the way that you are gonna do things. For example, I'll tell you what webcams I, I use and what cameras I use and what adapters I use, but say Cindy is working on a Macintosh platform, uh, 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 an Apple platform and this software doesn't run on an Apple platform. So, okay, so now what we want to do is say, when Cindy gets herself together, then we'll start making a list, okay, what worked for Cindy? Now, <clears throat> that's that I'm going to segue into something that uh, I'm very pleased to announce here tonight, is that uh, I set up an initiative a couple of years ago, a very quiet initiative that has just, just gone public, and that is a website, <clears throat> uh, it's, a, it's an online community called Lucid Woodturners, L-U-C-I-D, Wood turners plural. We have a booth. Lauren and I said we have this. We have this discussion here, and then we're over. We wanted a place to continue the discussion, so we, we took out a booth. We're doing lucid wood turners, and so part of the idea of lucid wood turners is to use technology in a lot of different forms to help with our wood turning projects, to share wood turning, to to educate people, to help people with disabilities. To, to make wood turning more available for more people, et cetera. And that is gonna be the place where we're going to consolidate this stuff and have uh, uh, you know, equipment lists and people say, well, I, I use this, but this didn't work for me, but I got this one and it did work for me. That's, that's where we're gonna continue the conversation. There's a whole discussion forum on the website. Yeah. And it's lucidwoodturners.com. Yes. And, and, that, and, and when someone says, okay, this is what I've got, where do I go from here? Someone will say, here, use this list, but you don't need this, you don't need that. You know, I can, I, I, two years ago, I brought a, about 200 pounds worth of equipment with me to demonstrate that you don't have to go any place with equipment. 
you know, at, but I wanted to show people what all the different options were. But he brought it again. Yeah, brought it again today. So, so I've, I've only got 13 cameras at, at the booth. Um, and uh, so come by and play. And I, I've got a Telestrator set up. We've got all sorts of stuff that we can do deep dives on. Um, uh, but I want to, I want to just give a, uh, let me segue, go, go one follow up. Well, well, I don't know if other people are, well, we're, let me tell you where I'm coming from. Sure. In, at, at our club, um, you know, we have monthly meetings or every other month and we can only afford to occasionally have a Mike Mahoney come. It's a, it's a wonderful experience. We can only do that maybe once a year, maybe it's every other year because it's expensive. Um, and it means he's got to travel. So I said to the, to, I'm on the board, and I said, why don't we investigate these remote demos? I saw it on Trent Fosh's website. I got an immediate negative reaction from the rest of the board. Without them even, almost all the rest of them. Almost <laughs> all the rest of them. Yeah, yeah. Without them even knowing anything about it. And so what I need to know is, what do I need to do with my, what do I have to have um, in order for it to be successful on, on our end? To receive the demo. And what, and you're all going to have your different equipment, and I don't care what it is. I need to know, hey, if I'm going to hire Lyle to do this, how do I know that he's got what it takes? Because I'll tell you, when, when Mike is there, when he presented to us a couple of years ago, we had, um, two, he's the person we can see him. Is we've got two cameras, somebody else is doing the, you know, sometimes we had them at the same time, sometimes we had two screens showing the same thing, depending on what he's doing. He's concentrating on what he's showing us. Um, so I'm, I'm just, can, can you manage all of that yourself? Or do yeah. you have to have an yeah. assistant yeah. on the, so. Yeah. Go, 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 let's talk. That, well, uh, but this is, but these are, these are important. Club, right? This is exactly the discussion we should have. Wait. In, in the chapter sentence. Okay. okay. I was in the same boat here because none of the senior guys ever did this stuff. And I was the only one who sort of had the technical will to go try it. And I contacted Alan after Tim Yoder's presentation and we took it the next step. I had a PC, I had a TV, and that's it. And I talked him in to get a camera so that not only could we do the remote demonstrations, but for once we could start watching our own demonstrators. Because most of the time we were sitting. Yeah, now, no all right, Lyle, Lyle, Lyle chime in. I'm, I'm going to kind of moderate here. Go ahead. Yep. All the technology is on our end. For the club, all you need is a laptop and somebody that knows how to plug in a monitor and a speaker. It's a simple, simple thing. We need a, we need a camera. Prefer, prefer, well, most laptops have cameras camera in there. on your laptop. Right. And we need a PA system, right? So you, you, could, you could conceivably even do it on, on a phone if you needed to. That's a backup plan. Is if the computer died, how could you continue? 35 people aren't going to hear a television. No, 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 no. But, but literally, the, the, the phone could be the device, the communication device, and then you'd hook that up to a speaker and you use the, the camera in the phone. Um, the, the, with, with our case, just give you an idea of sort of, with, Lauren and I are worst case demonstrators in that I'm in my basement shop. She's at the second floor of our home. So we're not even near each other. She's got a computer with three cameras and so she's controlling her cameras. And she, uh, by the way, Lauren is doing uh, her two demonstrations tomorrow morning at eight o'clock or eight thirty and ten something, so she's doing the sessions on embellishment, and I'll be riding shotgun for her over there. Um, and I'm down in my shop. Although I tell people you should have three cameras, I've got like six or eight cameras and all sorts of stuff. Um, but but the thing is that we're working jewelry. We're working things that are two inches in diameter. People are watching a monitor. And if they're staring at the TV screen, I don't need to be in the room because it's going to be staring at the TV screen anyway. So, so for us, we can do a better demonstration from our shop. If you need to see how I, I sharpen my tools, 
I don't sharpen on a bench grinder. I sharpen on a, a two inch by 72 inch belt grinder or on a jewel tool. So to seeing how we work in our shops is very different than trying to get a demonstrator to work on your club lathe. Lyle. I'm sure that, that you had a good time when Mike was there and he did a good job for you. And I've done it all over the country with hundreds of times with different clubs all over the country. I can do a better demonstration from my own shop with my own cameras and my own tools than I could if I was in your shop. Yeah. But is it interactive? Because it yeah, totally interactive. I've done, no, I've no, done no. the same <laughs> demo on Halloween. Oh, I was going to say a thousand. I don't know, many hundreds of times. And they're all different because of the audience interaction. I follow the trail of the questions. Right. It's and not a I recording, ask, it's and a I live performance. The, and I ask the audience questions as I'm doing the demo. It's totally interactive, it's just, and that's the comment that I get all the time. Wow, it's just like you were in the room. You did a demo for us, uh, uh, Red Blue Wind Turners, about a year and a half ago, we did it online, and it was interactive. We asked yep. him questions, yep. and he answered them. And it's totally live. Yep. It was a live demo. Alan, can you repeat the question? question there that's behind you. Oh, oh, you're hiding behind the camera. Talk. Hi. Um, my, my question is the interactive part, that we'd have to have some sort of a microphone that, that they would, would they walk up to it or would it be sensitive it's enough to pick up from the room, you know, because they'll be sitting around and these guys yep. don't want to come up and, and talk on a microphone. So we have to have something where you can hear. Yeah. There's one problem that I've uh, had with a number of clubs is me being able to hear the questions. And that's easily done by somebody standing or sitting in the front of the room where the the microphone is and repeating the questions i w would rather have a mic available to the question person but it works fine without right. it and, it's and, not a deal breaker right and it turns out that that in fact Emiliano just bought one for himself uh he, he just bought a usb microphone that plugs into the computer oh as a matter of fact uh, that he, he bought a lavalier microphone, and I'll explain why a lavalier microphone. Uh, a lavalier is a, is a lapel microphone, um, the, as opposed to a, a handheld microphone. And the only reason that he bought that, as opposed to a handheld microphone, is that in the event that his main microphone dies, you can't take a handheld microphone and shove it up underneath your face, face shield. So what he did, was he took a lavalier microphone and I said, you know, we know people that can take a piece of wood and spin it around, make a handle. <laughs> so he's got his, his, his waste pack here and he's plugging in the lavalier and now he's got this nice little portable thing and it, I, I think it costs like $89. A club can afford $89 for a microphone to pass out to the audience. When, when Lauren and I demonstrate, we always pass one out to the audience because when someone said, you need to repeat the question, why do you need to repeat the question? Because we couldn't hear the question. Why couldn't you hear the question? Because they don't have a microphone. Well, give them a microphone. You know, that, it's, not, it's not a big deal. It's not a thousand dollar piece of equipment. So, but, but he's right. If you don't have that, you have somebody to repeat the question. You know? Um, uh, so, whoop, there we go. Uh, let me get this out of the way because now I see that we've got all sorts of weird stuff going on on the screen. Yeah. What's that? So we pass it around. No, no. General, generally, you'd want for 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 out in the in the audience, you want a wireless microphone, and and uh, Samson uh, uh, XPD one is a is a wonderful thing. This one I think costs costs. Uh, yeah, we need, yeah, we need lists. Yeah, yeah. And but the lists are changing as the equipment evolves. So so that's that's fine. And again, if you go to Lucid Wood Turners, you'll see a discussion of what microphones people are using. Yeah. Well, yeah. That that's fine. And and. This is, this is what it's about. It's a, a sharing our experiences, sharing what we know. Question in the audience. This might sound silly, but if you want to set up one of these remote demonstrations, who do you From a demonstrator to? standpoint or from a recipient from standpoint? Club. From our club. If right. If wanted to set something up, how do we go about that? Well, Dave Hewlett wrote an article in, um, in uh, More Wood Turning magazine uh, just about a month or two ago that uh, was from the club's perspective. And on Lucid Woodturners, if you go there, 
there's a link that we can read that article. He has permission to, pro to publish the article. Let me, let me, let me I mean, I've had Mike, Mike Peace, Mike Mahoney, and Lyle have done online demos for us. I just sent them an email and asked them about it. That's what I was going to say. If you're interested in it, call one of us. Any, call Mike, call me, and I'll talk to you as a president and say what you need to do with the club. I'll talk to your tech person, say what you need to, to get the computer going. And if I have any other questions, we call Alan. But the AAW <laughs> can help now. Yeah. So. The AAW is just about ready to launch a new service called Demonstrator Direct. You can access it through the AAW website and it will give you a map and information about everybody who has identified as a demonstrator. Scott, just point that way. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> and it will cover various specialties. You know, somebody like Mike is a bull turner, uh, other people are embellishers and so on. It will also include people who do remote demonstrations. Right. So you'll be able to filter the list by saying, okay, who does remote demonstrations? It's it's a first step. And and so in fact one of the things that uh, that Dave Hewlett was lamenting at the bottom of his article, he made a list of the people that are doing remote demos. He says, This list should be like much longer than it is. But now we're sort of building critical mass. So what I want to do is is talk about but I just want to switch over to, to Mike for a couple of minutes because his approach is quite different. Um, he does what I refer to as the director's cut. And if you don't mind, if I can just show a couple of pictures here sure. because they were sent to me. Um, uh, let's uh, cut here. So I'll just flip through the pictures really quickly and then you can sort of describe why this is a little different than what, say, the rest of us are doing. So, so have, I've got nine a series of nine videos already queued up um, and they're edited just for remote demonstrations so it's not me actually turning you're watching me turn and then I'm explaining the techniques and what I'm doing I have the ability to draw pause fast forward on anything that we watch whether it's thread chasing or holoforms or making a platter like in this case um, I I was I, I talked to Lyle and, and, and Alan about this, and I, I, I kind of have stage fright, so I didn't want anybody in my, <laughs> in my uh, shop holding cameras while I work, so I, I, I thought uh, this was the way I would like to talk about it. So that's how I do it. I, I, I theoretically thought it was a good idea at first to stand in front of a big screen like a weatherman and, and talk to the crowd. Um, that, that, that didn't work out that way yet. I think it can work out in the future, but what I do is basically I share my computer screen with you and uh, you're, you're basically, this is exactly, and I'll be rolling through the videos and, and talking about uh, um, what I'm doing. Yeah, well, I, I call this the, the director's cut approach where he's narrating over these videos that he's already done. Tom. I want to, I want to share with Mike rest of it because we just had Mike do this. As a matter of fact, these are screenshots. And I got a note from one of our senior uh, wood turners and he said, I can't remember if I sent you comments on this video demo last evening. Anyway, I thought it was very well done. Lots of detail on exactly how he uses the tool, comments on his designs, etc. I also thought it covered a lot of material and we had an ample time for questions. I have attended in person a number of his demos and I feel I got just as much or more, even more, than with this uh, video presentation. Thanks to you and Mike for a job well done. That's nice. Yeah, that's very nice. So, so I guess my point on this is that he's taking a very different approach. He's not doing a live wood turning demo. He's saying, I've already spent the time to show you how to make these cuts. Let me show you that. And what Lauren and I will wind up doing, in fact, you'll see tomorrow morning, that she's doing live stuff, but she'll cut to a video or she'll cut to a still picture of something just because it's easier to show you that in 30 seconds rather than set up to do this thing. Or rather than, let me, let me arrange these pens on the, the thing here, let's make it in, in focus. Well, just prepare the picture and, and, and be able to do that. So you can start doing rich media. You can have pictures, you can have PowerPoint decks, you can have 
slides, you can have uh, uh, photos, uh, uh, videos, uh, it, it just goes on and on and on. What's that? What Mike would normally do on a whiteboard. Yeah, in fact, whiteboards are, are kind of funny. There are uh, people like Lyle that continue to, to draw pictures on a whiteboard. I would never draw a picture more than once. I draw the picture and take a picture of it and then continue drawing, take another picture. So I'm just gonna go, I'm not gonna take the time to draw it because I can just show you the steps. But the um, is when Lyle wants to do it. Step oh yes, this is, this is. Yeah, yeah. so. Which can be done. Again, you can, the I just image, don't wanna take the time to do the drawing when I could have it pre-done. But again, that's all, those are the different styles of presenter. It's mixing that. Oh yeah. So the sure. other thing is, when you come to Lucid Woodturner's booth, I'm going to I'm going to uh, have a Telestrator set up, so that not only can I draw on whatever the video is, I can have somebody at another computer drawing on the video, and it shows up. So you Th could have this is another advantage. Uh, this image right here is an ex exact <coughs> what we're talking about. If I had a whiteboard in front of me, which I have that ability with the program that I have, I'd rather show you the image. Because if I had to draw a gouge and the bevel angles and this thing like that, I don't. Sometimes you don't know where, where I'm coming from. And you know where I'm coming from with this. This is this is this is great for me, and I think for the viewers, uh, it isn't great for the viewers unless you're really interested in this. This is nerdy stuff, but um, it's. It, but Mike, it's not canned. You're live. Yeah, that's right. You know, yeah. you're you're interacting. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. Yeah. So, so Emiliano is in it from both sides of it. I mean, he started receiving remote demonstrations and then he uh, started doing some remote demonstrations. And, and he, remember the same kind of setup that a demonstrator would use could be installed at a club because when you're doing something like this, uh, let me uh, just switch to the other camera. Uh, let's just go to this one here. When you're doing something like this, you're, you're mixing, you're putting together your video image. One camera, two cameras, side by side, picture in picture, whatever. If I decided I wanted to, uh, to show Mike's thing down in the, the bottom corner of the screen, this is trivial stuff for anybody with, with uh, a decent video mixer. Um, but once you've got this trivial image- Trivial for you. Well, no, but once you've got this image, well, you're doing picture in picture on a regular basis. Uh, you know, if I want to show camera one, I press the one on the keyboard. If I want to show camera two, I press the two on the keyboard. If I want to show camera one in the picture in picture, I press the letter that's under the one on the keyboard. So the first letter of that row, the second letter of that row, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it, I've got it set up so that it is dead simple. But um, uh, the, what's that? Yeah, I'm using software and this software actually can be had for as low as $60. It's incredible. Uh, that's this little webcam right here. Oh. Right. And, and I'm also ingesting the, uh, the other camera there. I'm ingesting, I just need to find my mouse, uh, the, the house camera here. Uh, so I, this camera was supposed to go directly to the monitor. So I unplugged it, plugged it into my computer, my computer output in, and, and threw it out. Um, I can show you, well, I'll, I'll we'll show you in a little bit what, what this looks like. But the, uh, uh, the issue is that this can be as simple as a two webcams and the camera built into the lid of a notebook computer or as elaborate as, as one cares to, uh, to be. But the same, the same type of a system at a club means that not only could you do a live demo to another club, but you could also uh, once you've got the image, you can save it to your hard disk. That's just called recording. Or you could send it out to YouTube or Facebook as a, as a stream. I have the capability if I wanted, I can do instant replay. I could show you that catch over and over again. You know, live, like a sports, like a sports team, right? Let's, let's see him blow up the bowl again, right? Uh, that's right. So, so we have a lot of capabilities that you don't even think about. I mean, I can take the image, I can send it out to an external monitor like this. I can take the image, I can send it out as if it was a webcam to another communications program. But it's all a matter of getting your, getting your cameras together. And the, the, the key with this 
is that it's a, it's a little different skill set that the, that the demonstrator needs to know, and that is the demonstrator <coughs> is handling the cameras generally. My cameras are right above the lathe, right next to me. These webcams focus within a couple of inches, and I can move a camera faster than I can tell somebody where to move the camera to. Um, and if I have a camera that's on this side of the lathe and I want it on the other side of the lathe, I will just take another camera stand, the microphone stand, put it there, clip the microphone, move it over there, five seconds later you've moved the camera. Yeah? Two questions. How long, what's the learning curve to learn the video software? And the second question is, what's the learning curve to learn how to not overuse Special yeah, well, I, I tend, that's, very, that's a really good question because what we don't want to do, when people look at my setup, it can be intimidating because I've got all these different things. I've got MIDI controllers and remote keyboards and all this kind of stuff. But you start off slow and when I, when I mentor people and I, I, I get them to do this, we say, okay, we're going to get one camera up and we're going to try to record one camera. Then we're going to try to do a picture-in-picture, picture, and I'm going to show you how to switch cameras. And I'll say to Lyle, Lyle, show me input one, and, and show me input number three in, in the picture-in-picture. Picture. And you know, he struggles with it for a second. Oh, yeah, I know how to do that. And he just presses this button and that button, and it just happens. Do the same thing with Emiliano. And I've been mentoring people just because I enjoy doing it. But the more people that know how to do this and know how to teach this to other people, that's really the goal. Again, it's not about me. I'm trying to do this as a, as a, a crowdsourced uh, uh, initiative so that people are, are sharing. Yep, Lyle. Answer your question. You've got two questions, though. From the demonstrator's standpoint, if I can do it, anybody can do it. It's not a long learning curve, but you do have to put some pieces of the puzzle together, and there's help to do that. From the club standpoint, it's no learning curve. I mean, you set a, a laptop up there. If you've got anybody with any technical skills, how to plug a, a monitor to it, that's all you got to do. Yeah. So there's no there's no learning curve on the club side of it at all. And there's always a test. Before. Yeah, we always do it. Always do a test. Always do, always a, do a, a test a session. Trial test. Yeah, right. trial test. Right. Right. Yeah. All right. Let's start in the back of the room, Fred. We'll work our way up to the questions here. Start in the back of the room. How do you address the the, the internet problem um, in terms of lag? in terms of the cutting out. Um, like we were looking at Dick there, for, you know, he, his, his mouth is moving and his voice is a half a second behind. And I, mean, I, really, I really like the, the idea of it, but I can see if you get a, you know, 50 guys together and you're all excited to see Mike do a demo, and all of a sudden, um, I mean, where we have our meetings, and I don't even know if there is Wi-Fi, but, or internet, but if it freezes, you're gonna lose Guys that, that's true, but on the other hand, how many times have you, uh, well, I've been to many times where people are crawling underneath the rope, the, the, the one-way lathe trying to get the inverter restarted. <laughs> that, I mean, the odds, of, there, are, there are logistical <laughs> issues that come up, but they're no more difficult to deal with than, than planes getting snowed in, and, and uh, I mean, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, what the Jimmy Clues arrived last year at Totally Turning and his tools didn't. You know, so you can what if yourself to death. Mike's got probably one of the worst internet connections out there. Um, uh, right now we've got like a two megabit connection. This is, this is pretty bad here. But we're still able to have Dick participate. Um, so th those things can, can uh, uh, be addressed. Let, I'll just hold the questions for a moment because I want to get Emiliano uh, his his uh, uh, take on both being a demonstrator and being a recipient, and then we'll open up to, to questions. Emiliano, yeah. Should we, should, the quick answer to that, though. We have backups. I did one just recently, I forgot who it is now, that the microphone wouldn't work, and so we ended up using our my telephone connection as our mic. I mean, there's backups for it. So it's not that tough to, the, the programs that we use now and the technology that we use, and we help the clubs do this by getting a hardwired and a good internet connection. So you don't have a drop off. It's not like Skype. Skype's not as strong of, of a program that we yeah. use. 
It's a stronger program that's more reliable, and so you don't have the drop off, you don't have the delays. Yeah, we, we wind up we wind up working with programs that do better in low bandwidth conditions, and that's and that's one part of the things that we go. Um, I, I regularly deal with a, a group from from England and uh, uh, called World of Live Streaming, and this guy's sitting there with this horrible connection, but everybody else in the call has got good connections, so we kind of work off of each other. Emiliano, why well, don't you uh, talk a little bit? Oh, let me, let me show, let me show your, your video first. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. All right, this is Emiliano, because he, he's really shy and... and <laughs> uh, Well, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Emiliano Achevo, and I just spent, I would say, two to three hours with Alan. Uh, thank you, Alan, very much. I will not be doing this without Alan. Uh, I'm going to make a short video to show you my vMix setup. Um, I'm going to go to my other cameras now. Aloha. Okay, now I'm. Uh, taping with my NDI phone. In Portland, I'm going to buy a Osmo mobile holder, but I'm holding an iPhone in my hand, and that iPhone is connected via an app, NDI app, to vMix. So there is my laptop right there. Here is the camera, uh, Logitech 910, above the lathe. There's work on the lathe. And there is a Logitech 920 on, on a tripod. Okay, the shop is a little messy. I've been working hard to get, re get ready for Portland. Okay, here I wanted to show you guys that I'm using my Latronics D100 Bluetooth headset. I'm doing a voiceover. Uh, I forgot to turn on that microphone when I was doing that, uh, that part. So that's not lag. He's just, he's now you can see me walking around with the iPhone in my hand when I have the DJI Osmo Mobile. Osmo Mobile is going to be a little bit more smooth. But uh, there's my setup. Having fun, thanks to Alan. Sometimes the iPhone, there you go. You got to click on it so it comes clear. But anyways... I see you guys in Portland, from yeah, Maui, aloha. Yeah, an iPhone, when you think about it, is a high definition video camera that's battery powered, focuses to about an inch and has a light right next to the camera. If I need to show the inside of a hollow form, I want to use that. And so he's using it as a, a, a third camera. I like so, the iPhone, it's really so convenient. Pull, pull this cl close yeah. to you. I like the iPhone, it's really convenient when somebody goes, hey, can you show me how you sharpen that gouge? So I just move it from the little tripod that I have and I set it up. Uh, it's easier to move than the other, that the stationary camera wrapped it above the lathe, that one stays there. I can move the tripod around, but the iPhone, it's really, really convenient. Um, I founded the Maui Wood Turners Association about two years ago. Uh, one of the first phone calls that I get from the old guard of wood turning in Hawaii is they tell me do not dare pay for the, their ticket if somebody wants to come and teach in Hawaii. And I'm like, why? He goes, because we said so. I said, okay. So I'm like, how are we going to bring quality people to Hawaii? So we can only afford to bring one, maybe two a year. Um, so when Alan started telling me about this, I jumped at it and I first got into to receive people. Yeah. Then one thing led to another, due to the lack of demonstrators in Hawaii, I was forced to go to the other islands to show my handshake traits, how to do a ball, how to do this, how to do that. And then people started asking me to do it remotely. I did two demonstrations, two symposiums in Argentina. And that was a good question about the uh, internet connection. The internet connection in Argentina, you can imagine what it is, it's horrible. Uh, you need a decent connection. Mike's, his connection was pretty good. Uh, we had no complaints when Mike, uh, when he did his, uh, Lyle, yours was a little stronger than his, but Mike's and Lyle's, we did both. Uh, actually, Maui, we received uh, Alan and Lauren, 
We did Lyle twice. We did Mike. We're waiting on Dick Gerard. Dick, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I can um, hear you. <laughs> and Cindy Drozda. Can you see um, me? We, we need more people to join. We need you guys. I can guarantee you that we will hire you to do one for us in, in Maui. Now, now, by the way, I just wanted to show you something very quickly. These are, these are, I'm just going to bop through a very quick set of what people can expect to see tomorrow at, at Lauren's uh, demonstration. But this would be the typical type of thing. This was done actually on site at New Jersey Woodturners. So this is I have happens. done everything uh, I'm from... Gonna, I'm going to mute this here. Um, so this is an example of us using a green screen so we can drop her into the, uh, into the picture. Uh, we, we wanted to show what we want to show a video clip so that show that she actually does turn so it's not all about embellishment and um, uh, so she was doing this and she was uh, working with a, a vermic sphere jig which people say it's cheating I say putting something on a lathe and spinning it around to make it round that's cheating um, and so this is a, a PowerPoint deck these are photographs uh, this is some of our, our typical work. Um, this is an example of having a, a picture that you've pre, pre-done. You know, it's sharp, it's clear, it's, you know, it, it's, it's fine. And as she's talking about it, um, might, might just as well get her in the picture. Because the people that are, are viewing it later on, it's nice to have the, the, uh, the demonstrator <coughs> there. Um, the camera that's on her, on her rig is three inches away from the piece. So this is the optimal picture for that piece. It's focused exactly where I want it to be focused. Um, and so what happens is, uh, as she's working on this, you can see her working, you see the results of the work. We do a lot of picture in picture stuff. And as the, as the uh, uh, day progresses, or as the session progresses, you start seeing the piece progress. But this is actually what it looked like as she was, was sitting there with a green screen behind her. I mean, most of you don't have a green screen in your shop. Go to, go to Joanne's fabric and get a piece of green fabric so you can drop out the background. Most people aren't gonna do this, but some of us are pushing the envelope a little bit. But this is the kind of stuff you could do at your own club to rethink the way you're doing demonstrations. Don't have to be remote demonstrations. Even at your club, the way they're doing it by taking a, 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 a standard definition video out of your camcorders and, and just putting it through a mechanical switch, there are ways to rethink how you can do a better demonstration even at your own club. The remote demonstration is just an extension of this. So it's, again, it's not about remote demonstrations necessarily, it's about rethinking your preconceived ideas about what demonstrations are and who can demonstrate for you. Uh, let's give somebody else a, a chance. We'll get back to you, Alan, in the back there. Yeah, three questions, if you'd mind. The first one is, uh, you walk into the club now. We're at the club side. We're hiring one of you folks to do a demo on uh, over the internet. Without any equipment handy, what is the baseline dollars? If we go back to Amanda in North Dakota and say, okay, this is what we want to do. What's the dollar figure I have to come up with to initiate that? Not your fees, generally, but what is the initial fee? That's the first question. Second question is, on a scale of one to 10, how adept does that person have to be to set that up and to work that at the club meeting? And the third question is, I heard you say one time, look, you can put this stuff together and you can put it to your hard drive so you can see it again. Is everybody still really good with that? No, that, that, I'll, I'll address the last part and move back into the other ones. The, the question about intellectual property and what can, be, what can be recorded and who can see it, I typically record all of our sessions. And, but you don't want to find that on YouTube because then people, you know, you, you, someone's bootlegging your session. But on the other hand, we've done a session where they said, yeah, but there were a couple of people that couldn't attend the session. And I'm saying, okay, so we'll do another, another um, uh, video phone call. You get those people together. I'll be very happy to play the recording for that small group. It's kind of like a private showing. And so that's a way of doing it. 
or there are some clubs that you know you could say well the club members are allowed to see it but nobody else is allowed to see it it it's trying to to come up with the right blend of of intellectual property we put clips on our on our website or on, on youtube that said this is what you would see in a demo but it's not the demo so we're trying to figure out what's a reasonable thing to record is is one of the the ongoing questions because that's going to depend on the individual demonstrator and the individual club's need. Sometimes it's going to be, nope, we're not going to let anybody record it. And sometimes it's, you know, you pay me $3 million, I'll let you have all rights to it. You know, I, I can be bought. You know? uh, as they say, now we've already determined what kind of a girl you are, now we're just negotiating price. Yes, I can be bought. Um, uh, that's, wait, 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 we got a bunch more here. Oh, yeah, that's right. Let's, the, let's cost, be, the first question you asked is, do you have a monitor at your club site now? No. Okay, well, whatever, what is the cost of buying a TV? Big, hey, Alan. You know, go, to, go to Costco and price and make it anywhere from three to, uh, on us, depending on how big a TV you want. That's your biggest cost. But you're going to use that at every meeting, probably, for to have someone plug in a, a camcorder or whatever depending on your set of camcorder, let's say, and broadcast TV for any demonstrator on site. And the other piece of equipment, does anybody in clubs own their tablet? Is willing to bring it in and plug it in? Might be no cost to try it out. Somebody just right. brings in their tablet and plugs it in. Yeah, it could then be a tablet, soft, could be a computer, could be anything. Software's free. Uh, the, at least the download version that Alan gave me, it's called Zoom. That's free. It, it takes 10 seconds to download, and then uh, then the demonstrator and that PC will, or that computer will communicate together as for the remote demonstration. And that'll be up to the demonstrator. So I think you got to get the monitor and, of course, the PC, and then, of course, you have to have Wi-Fi. Uh, well, mo good most wifi. clubs have this stuff these days anyway. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So that's all you need. But yeah. Most of the time, it's pretty much free at the club level. You don't need a, uh, anything more than what you already have for your, your local meetings. Yeah. Now, just to let you know, we've got two monitors at the Lucid Woodturners booth, and we decided not to rent them from the venue here because they were $500 per day per monitor. So we went to Best Buy, bought 50-inch monitors for $249 each, and we shipped them here. Gone are the days of the $5,000 monitor. You know, you can you can do just just fine. There were questions in in this side of the room in the back. Yes, no, they dissolved. And by the way, thank you, Mike. Um, all, all the way in the back. Just roughly, what's the cost to have a demo done? I mean, normally, I'm in the middle of Michigan, across uh, you know, twenty five hundred, thirty five hundred dollars to have somebody come in for a Saturday demo and <coughs> saying, okay, well, we've got to have some teaching sessions and we have to do other things to try and figure out how to make it. So the going rate right now is somewhere between two and $300 for a club meeting demo. For like a two-hour demo. Five bucks a person. No big deal. Right. And, and, and remember, what you're doing is, is the demonstrators are generally charging what they would charge anyway, but you don't have all the, the logistic expenses. You know. Just to add to that, I was invited to do a demo, but it required a day travel out. That's the problem. The, the day before the demo, because I couldn't reliably get there, the day of the demo, and then maybe a follow-up day, and then another day back, I couldn't do it. Yeah, well, yeah. When, we, when we did this uh, uh, New Jersey Woodturners one uh, a couple of weeks ago, as we're loading the car, we're saying, it was so cheesy, we just turned on the cameras <laughs> in, in there, but we wanted to do a dry run for, for, for the symposium here. Um, uh, it, it really, again, it's not necessarily about remote demos. It's about rethinking how you do them. In fact, when we're talking to, to Mike, um, he said, well, you know, I've only got like one remote demo coming up and I don't know if it's worth investing in the equipment. I said, well, you know, the same equipment that you're doing, you could be using it for your YouTube videos. And he's saying, oh my God, I put out like one video a week these days. And then instead of doing a, one camera, moving the camera from here to here and here and doing a whole bunch of post-production, now we can actually just have a multiple camera set up and, and do, it's a different way of him doing his YouTube videos. Or someone like Rebecca DeGroote, who's, who's not here this evening, um, will say, I'm going down into my shop for a while, do you want to watch? It's not even a demo. It's Facebook Live or YouTube Live. It's, it's this idea of sharing what you're doing. It doesn't have to be a class. 
It can be, you know, grandmothers are having video phone calls with their grandbabies. It's, it's, not, it's not that uh, dramatic. I, I wanted Qu to... Question, question in the, back there. So, um, I think I am on both sides of what's going on here. I'm really enthusiastic about this stuff. You're right, just say again? I'm really enthusiastic okay. about the remote stuff. I have permission from my club to set it up. I know if I set it up and it screws up, it'll be five years before they think about it, and I spend 10 years laughing. Yeah. So I don't, you know, and I'm not getting comfort from this session that I should take that risk in. So what I want to know is, is there some, like, five-minute test I could do? I could go out to the club site with my iPad and... Sure. Yes. We always do a test we, we, yes. we always do this. Yes, absolutely. Right. So, sure. Could you, so how, do, how would I go about setting that? You, you can would I call any one of us and say, you know, let's let's do a test. Yeah. You know, no, but absolutely. But but the fact that, that that it could fail. That that's an interesting thing. What happens if if it can can fail? I, the, the, I the, have an answer for that. Well, but this is like driverless cars. No, no. This is <laughs> this is much no. less much less stress. <laughs> <laughs> cars is that everybody's going to notice the first disasters, mm -hmm. and it won't matter that the, <laughs> that the human driver. There, there was a first car collision in the town that had two cars. <laughs> yeah, good question. We just had a demo where the fellow was going to do a coloring demonstration, mm -hmm. and he and his wife both forgot the dice. You can screw up if it's live. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but that's exactly that's exactly the point. As a matter of fact. If for some reason or other you couldn't do the demo, if for some reason the internet connection went out, that's not a whole lot different than the plane got snowed in. Except that you haven't paid for all that plane travel and you haven't, you say, all right, so we'll do some, we'll have a show and tell this month and we'll get the guy next month. It's not like you've, you've expended a lot of effort trying to get somebody there. We had uh, uh, a, a situation where a demonstrator uh, uh, came to a New Jersey club and we meet at an environmental center and the, the, the groundskeeper wasn't around. They didn't open the building. We're standing out in the parking lot and fortunately he was able to stay for the next day, but we couldn't get into the building. So, you know, it's like, oh, well, we're never gonna do another demo because, another club meeting because this thing fouled up. But I understand your point. But as the first year was, here was about why someone should consider doing it. And all the naysayers, the people that are saying, oh, this won't work, we tried this 10 years ago. These, the people here are people that are actually doing it. And if you hear from the clubs, the real, one thing that we hear over and over from the clubs, at least when Lauren and I do demos, is that the chatter in the room is almost non-existent. People are transfixed on the monitor. And then with us, they say, we'd like to, for you to do another demonstration. Do you mind if it's only Lauren? <laughs> so <laughs> we hear that a lot. Mm. All right, Al, up, uh, Alan in the front. So yeah. This is not really a question. It's more uh, an em embellishment. I, you know, I was chatting with Trent Bosch ab about this, and he does this as well. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he does is, um, depending on the, on the demo, so let's say he's doing his Vessels of Illusion, he'll UPS out you a box. Oh, absolutely. That shows the various stages so that you can pass it around in the room, you can touch it, you can feel it. Um, and then you put it back in the box and send it back. That, to that, the that's a, an back. excellent point. So what he's saying is, uh, people say, well, you know, you don't, we like having stuff to pass around. Well, send the box and pass stuff around. Now, I wanted to say something. Those of you who have to go back to your club and bring it up to the club, talk to the club members, do not talk to the guys that have a flip phone. Only guys that have a flip phone. <laughs> Flip phone? No, you out. Yes. A question in the back of the room. Well, I, I, had, uh, I had the opportunity to see the first one they had in Maui. Uh huh. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Yeah. That was good, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, everything didn't go perfectly smoothly, but it went pretty well. And the thing that impressed me the most was uh, Mike was the one uh, teaching on that one. That wasn't the first. I think that was your first one, wasn't it? No, Lyle was our first. Oh, okay. I was the second. Lauren second, and I were the second. Then Lyle again. Yeah. Well, what, what impressed me was you could actually ask questions, and it was just like they were there. It was, 
it was a give and take. It wasn't just <coughs> watching a video. And it, That's the feedback I get a lot. Sort yep. of thing, yeah. Just like as if they were there, but the expense of transporting until we get that teletransporter to have on starting. Right. Yeah. Zoom. <laughs> Beam me up, well, Scotty. And, and, yeah. Go ahead. I wanted to say yeah. that we also offer a talkback session for the next meeting if people have the chance to try what we've shown them and they have questions because you have know, not had um, questions after you've tried something. And they can show us what they've done and we can give feedback. So yep. Yeah, uh, having a follow up is a, very, is a very nice thing to do. Um, uh, more, more questions, more questions. Yes, sir. Actually, I have two questions. One, we talk about internet speed and connections, and that's relative, I mean, to what you're used to. If I am in a community center, I have Wi-Fi, I cannot get a, they won't let me connect to their service. Yeah, no, fine. No way. If I can stream a YouTube video without buffering, would that be sufficient? Gen generally, yes. Um, uh, if you can get, say, a three megabit download, you, you, you go into a browser and type in www.speedtest.net, and that'll tell you what your download speed is and what your upload speed is. You're mostly interested in the download speed because although <coughs> we like seeing the audience, to be honest with you, having a camera on a bunch of guys with gray beards sitting there staring at a computer monitor isn't the most compelling video, unless they're asking a question. Um, so very often we'll say, okay, listen, we've got bandwidth issues. Well, you mute your video. You'll turn it on when you need to, to turn it on. Um, uh, but what I, I want to do, the, the two people I want to hear from, is, is Tim Yoder still in the room? Tim? Because when you think about what Tim was doing with, with, his, uh, with his show, is he's using video in a way to teach wood turning. And now his stuff is pre-recorded and it's not, uh, it's not interactive, but this idea of, of using video as a rich medium to teach wood turning, to, to expose more people to wood turning. I have no idea how many people got interested in wood turning because they ran across his show. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't know if Tim has thought about doing you know, interactive stuff, but, but this idea about how do you teach this stuff I think it is uh, is important now. Are, are you? I don't know what your current uh, uh, situation is uh, because you were broadcast for a while. Do, are you doing anything on on the net these days or or on, on YouTube? What what's your what what's your take on on the future of this? Well, we're all YouTube right now. Um, we're on PBS for four years. But the thing that about this is is that all the clubs might think this is a great idea, but it does put a lot of burden on the wood turner who's going to demonstrate because how long did it take you to make your presentation? A, a year. Yeah, uh, it, the slow motion catches I did took me something like six weeks. So <clears throat> there will be a vetting thing going on because there will be a lot of wood turners. There's already a lot of them right now on YouTube who think they can turn. <laughs> 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 Well, they're holding the camera with one hand and turning with the other one. Is it? <laughs> that takes some skill. There's other idiots who like to turn Stretch Armstrong on Rubik's Cubes. <laughs> anyway, I'm surprised they let me in this year. <laughs> but the thing is, is that you're going to find people who have the skills and the ability to understand how to say dog, see dog. So if you're talking about that cut, people want to see that cut. If you're talking about that grind, you show that picture of the grind. So yep. there's going to be a learning curve just for the wood turners doing the demonstrations themselves to understand that what they're saying has to have the visual component that has to follow. <coughs> just like you've been doing a great job following this, but how many times you've been to a demonstration where the photographer is like this, <laughs> watching the demonstration. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You can yeah. wind up with the same thing with the turner doing the demonstration yeah. and not paying attention to what they're doing. Okay, so another person who, who's uh, uh, dipping her toes into this is, is Cindy Drozda. And, and hers is a little different because she's using uh, a Mac. So I'm learning sort of how to teach people how to uh, do it on a Mac, which is not my, not my strong suit. But, but what, uh, Cindy, why don't you just talk a little bit, if you don't mind, just about the learning process, where, what, what you're finding easy, what you're, what you're finding challenging. I'm going to be competing with Lyle for the slowest 
Mike just did his, his first remote demo, right? Yes. And so, I mean, you, you're used to doing YouTube videos. So what was, what was it like for you to sort of transition to putting a computer into the mix? And, and what was your experience about your first demo? Who'd you do it to and what was your feedback? Yeah, it was, it was in, in and just speak up if you don't mind. In California, and the demo went real smooth. Is that your group? I thought it went smooth on mine. Great, we love it. Uh, the challenge was uh, if without Alan, I would not have been able to do it. I'm fairly techy. I used some software. And I was familiar with operating cameras and, and making videos. The learning curve on, on the software was a bit of a challenge. But let me tell you, learning how to use editing software to edit videos is <laughs> a big a challenge. Yeah, that's <laughs> this is no more difficult. Learning how to turn is, is a bit of a learning curve when you start adding multiple tools. Uh, and it's no different, but I had two uh, teleconference sessions with Alan, uh, close to three hours each. The first one, I thought I was almost there, then I went to the basement and played with it and tried to make some videos, and I had some problems. And I did, and this, uh, the, the, the group in California was coming up, and I was getting kind of nervous. And I had the second session with Alan and kind of dealt with those things that I didn't quite have down in deep memory, learned to, to get a little more comfortable setting some of those switches, and uh, now I feel pretty comfortable with it and looking forward to doing more of them because let me tell you, I had to bring tools to this demo, first time I've ever had to pack. I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I had to leave a lot of stuff at home. I didn't get to bring stuff for the instant gallery because I didn't have room for it. You know, the pieces I want to pass out, there's not much room. When you're in your shop, I can pull up all the samples and have them sitting there and come up with exactly the sample uh, that I want to want to show by just picking it up and, and and when you're done with the session you, you, turn, you turn off the lights go yeah go you're done there's nobody chasing you out saying we got to close the doors the janitor's gonna leave and all that stuff uh, a couple of a couple of uh, more questions yeah so my second question was you've mentioned a number of times that it's the demonstrator operating your computer and yeah switching cameras and everything else why does it have to be the demonstrator? Doesn't, it, doesn't it doesn't have to be the demonstrator. Okay. Because, uh, my because my wife won't come into my shop. Right. So, so if I, if I, um, uh, the, I'm, I'm sitting here looking at a, a, um, a VMIX uh, session, which has got 
all the camera inputs and the video files and all that's on the bottom. So I'm looking at this. If I want camera one, I press the one on the cam keyboard, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I could, I could give this to, to Emiliano and say, here, you switch cameras for me. Show me camera one, show me camera two. Um, my ceilings in my shop are six foot uh, four inches tall. I can't put a boom in there. I'm working alone. Lauren's working alone. It's, and I can literally move the camera faster than I can tell somebody to move the camera because I know where I need the camera to be. I know if it's right or not. So it, that's just another skill. Just like learning how to sand and finish and things like that, it's just another set of skills to learn. They're not difficult. They're just unfamiliar. Yeah. Could we take that camera for a minute and just show us what you're seeing? Well, I could, yeah, I, I could actually, yeah, Lauren, would you just unclip the camera there? Because I was going to show you the, uh, the, uh, my desktop, but this thing Let here. Let me put something into perspective here. As, as a demonstrator, I have controlled my cameras. I'm a control freak. When, in a, when I'm in a live demonstration, I control the cameras. There are some demonstrators out there that just do their demo and they don't know what's going on if the cameraman's taking a nap or not okay so i'm involved with it and i think you're going to find that most of us that that are going to be doing this are already involved with the cameras they know how to set the cameras up they know what how to get you the best picture that so you can tell what we're doing yeah uh, so in terms of our club members being able to do these for other clubs I don't want to have to teach each no, no, you're right. how to do it. If I know enough about doing it and can operate the camera and the computer and everything else, just set it up on my shop. Yeah, there, there are clubs, particularly in Texas, that were actually using vMix for, for some time. And they said, how are you switching the cameras with the keyboard? And like, I'll send you my files, right? And, and so they're, they're set up to do this for their club demos, not, not for remote stuff. That's just the way they're handling it in-house. In um, but uh, yes, you could have, you know, uh, we call the, the AV guy from high school, right? You can have somebody uh, setting the whole thing up and switching cameras and all of that. But in a remote demonstration situation where you're in your own shop, you typically don't have the luxury of having a production assistant with you. And so I want to just be able to move the cameras very easily. You see how, how you, uh, take this back, Lauren. Uh, you see how easy it is to unclip the camera and move it from one place to another. Um, we got little quick releases on all the cameras, and uh, just tilt it down and that way a little bit. Okay, fine. Well, um, if the camera operator can operate a camera. Why can't he just punch one, two, three, four? That's right. And, and stay awake at the same time. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's not it's not difficult. Uh, it really, it, and and the fact that we can do it all from the keyboard, and we could actually we could actually have somebody on on the network. Sitting there with your iPad controlling my cameras, switching from camera to camera. There's a lot of capabilities that, that, uh, that we can do. Um, uh, I don't know what time they're going to throw us out of here. Um, uh, so, so. We're already five minutes over. Well, but I thought it was only an hour session. We're already, we're already. Oh, okay. Um, so, are there are any more questions? Quick questions? Yeah, one. Yeah. You guys ever think of doing one-on-one -on -one this way? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I I know piano teachers that don't have their students come to their place anymore. No, no, but I'm saying, but that's to, to have do individual mentoring one-on-one. -on -one? Absolutely, it's no reason why not. I explained to Alan what I did one time, and he goes, "Oh yeah, we call that virtual handholding." I thought that was that was pretty cool. I was, I was trying to teach somebody how to do chase threads and. Was he was having a hard time and he put hey the, Alan uh, Alan yeah he woke up paging Mr. Zenreich yes Dick are you there Dick can you see me um, yes no and I don't know where where's my mouse oh here's my mouse uh, Dick Gerard oh there's Dick Gerard okay oh my God <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't changed a bit <laughs> <laughs> that's now what we Six should help. That's 49 years ago. <laughs> but I just wanted to say thank you to everybody. And um, I look forward to reaching out to you when I'm ready to go, which is not going to be very much longer, uh, maybe 10 days. And Alan, thanks so much for having me.
Mike Mahoney, are you there? Hi, Dick. Good to see you, man. Hey, Mike. Yeah. Did I hear you've got a new video coming out? Um, it's not so new. It's about six months old, I think. Oh, okay. Well, I need a copy. Uh, I'll, 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 you know what? Uh, well, let's do a one-on-one -on -one with VMix. We'll try. All right. I owe you that at much, at least. Wow. So, and so, did I see Alan Stratton and Tim Yoder in the audience? Alan's right in front of me. You betcha. Al, yeah, Alan's in the front in the front row. And, and this is just an example. Last year, I, I brought in uh, Emiliano, who was supposed to be in Maui. It turns out he was in Nebraska. And so I brought him in remotely. Uh, I'm trying to bring in uh, the, for the uh, Wood Training with Physical Limitations panel, uh, uh, a fellow who has essential tremors, bringing him in remotely. And by the way, this is a, a plug for all of you that uh, will be kind enough to help out Andy Sullivan with the blind uh, pen turners event. Uh, that was that, Saturday. Uh, that Saturday or tomorrow? I don't know, but the, 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 take a look. And, and it's about helping, they have a bunch of people from the Lighthouse for the Blind and we have a bunch of volunteers that come and help them turn pens. It's absolutely spectacular thing to be involved with. And, and it's one of the most gratifying things you'll, you'll ever do. So uh, Andy can no. always use more volunteers. So- Alan, um, just, just yeah. let me say good night. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're going to hang out with us until the last person leaves. <laughs> Good night. Say hi to Nancy for us. Right. Good night. Hey, hey. Bye, Dick. Tim Yoder, Cindy Drozda, Alan Stratton, hi to all of you. Have a good time. I hope to hear from you soon. Great. Bye, Dick. Take care, Dick. Bye, night. Bye bye. So I, I invite you to come to continue this discussion two places. One is the Lucid Woodturners booth. Lauren and I will be there after about noon tomorrow because she's got her two sessions in the morning. And we can play with all sorts of hardware and ask all sorts of questions. I've got gimbals. I'm in it for the toys, as you must have guessed by now. Um, but also, please join Lucid Woodturners. It's, it's about people. Um, did I even show you what it looked like? Uh, yeah, you had it earlier. Huh? Yeah, I had it earlier. If I come over here and then if I come back to the home page. This is Lucid Wood Turners, and it says, Turners using technologies to advance the craft and make wood turning available, uh, accessible to more people. And uh, uh, this is uh, really, I'll leave this up as we, as we sort of uh, pack it up. It, this really is all about sharing. I explain to people that I am generally, I'm not an evangelist. I don't care if people do things the way I do it, but I'm an enthusiast. I'll explain why I do things, the decision process that I made. But if you do things differently, I'm really interested in that because maybe I can adapt some stuff from that. Maybe you can take some things that, that, that I'm doing that will work for you. Um, I, I, You'll need really a Mac. It's really all about sharing. You'll need a Mac. Hey, listen, you, 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 you show me a Mac that can use the GPU and I'd be happy. All right. But uh, listen, thank you all for coming and I look forward to seeing you at this, at this symposium. Thank you all. We'll catch up. Yeah, we'll catch up. Are you at the double J? Yes. I've headed over there right now. All right.